Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Nebula. This will have some mild spoilers for Invincible Season 2. Okay, so cards on the table here. The premise of this video is verging on self-parody. After making a video on the first batch of this season of Invincible, I watched the new episodes and my takeaway was to make a video about the thinly veiled Spider-Man stand-in who had less than five minutes of screen time. Which probably means I have Spider-Man brain poisoning. But the more I thought about it, the more I couldn't manage to put this idea away. So please, if you're willing, indulge me as I lay out my reasoning for why the brand new Agent Spider, not so subtly based on our favorite webhead, should get his own show. Before I get there, feel free to leave a like, maybe share this with another Invincible slash Spidey fan. Alright, I just really want to get into this one. So, a little context. There was an issue of the Invincible comic that featured a pretty small appearance from Spider-Man, and even a Marvel team-up issue featuring both Invincible and Spidey published in the mid-2000s. Now, I'd imagine the world of TV contracts is a little more intense and high stakes than an issue or two of the comics, and having Peter Parker show up in the season finale of an Amazon Prime show was just not gonna happen. So the show did a workaround, introducing the character of Agent Spider, who is in the middle of battling a villain named Professor Auk. We see him swing around, stick to walls, quip, use his webbing, and then he's interrupted by Invincible, who has been forced into a series of alternate dimensions thanks to Angstrom Levy. They have a short conversation, and Agent Spider mentions that he's very familiar with alternate dimensions as well. That's mostly it, we're not talking about a character who plays a massive role in the finale. But what is there is notable, at least to me, and it definitely resonated with other Spider-Man fans considering Agent Spider was available as a costume mod in Spider-Man shockingly quickly. There's also the fact that Agent Spider was voiced by none other than Josh Keaton, who famously portrayed Peter Parker in the best Spider-Man animated show ever made, Spectacular Spider-Man. And at least in a small way, this cameo from a more experienced hero felt like catching up with that take on the webhead years later. Now all this seems to ride close enough to that copyright line to probably make some lawyers nervous, and in fact creator Robert Kirkman, who let's be honest has had his issues with Marvel the company in the past, was very happy to get around that stuff, saying to Variety, quote, I'm pretty sure Marvel found out about it today, we didn't call any Marvel lawyers or anything. Thing. No, that was Amazon's legal department's job to make sure that Marvel didn't need to know. At the same time, he wanted to make clear that Agent Spider was his own character in what seemed like a pretty tongue-in-cheek way, saying, he's not playing Spider-Man, that's Agent Spider. There might be some similarities, but I think Josh's nuanced performance as Agent Spider is completely different than the way he played Spider-Man in Spectacular Spider-Man. But who knows, my opinion may be somewhat biased. So okay, is this basically a cameo to replace Spider-Man's appearance in the comic, help Kirkman thumb his nose at Marvel a little bit, and give Spectacular fans a fun easter egg? Yes, but the thing is, I think it could and should be more than that. I think Agent Spider could support his own show. Now, the arguments against this are pretty easy to make. This is a one-scene, quasi-joke character, there's plenty of Spider-Man animated shows already, and Invincible itself is, in its own way, a riff on the Peter Parker archetype. But I really do think there's ways an Agent Spider show could set itself apart and delight Spider-Man fans the world over. First off, there's the surface level stuff, in that I, and I'm pretty sure plenty of others, would really enjoy seeing Spider-Man style action with an invincible tone. Yeah, I'm talking about over the top and gory Spider-Man, I'm not going to pretend I'm above that. It could really stand out and use webs in ways that are rarely seen on screen. I mean these things, we know they have some deadly potential. Um, sorry Gwen. But, violent action scenes aside, I think an Agent Spider show could really take advantage of a tone and era of Spider-Man that Marvel is no longer that interested in embracing. Now if you listen to Robert Kirkman talk about comics, he'll often mention his true childhood love lies with the early image guys, Mark Silvestri, Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, and, most importantly for our purposes today, Todd McFarlane. 
I don't think McFarlane's run on Spidey is perfect, uh, especially writing wise, but his art absolutely pushed forward what had been a pretty risk averse Marvel House style that was still largely based around John Romita's Spider Man look at the time into a far more detailed and extremely 90s era. It was also a time where Peter and MJ were mostly happily married, while also not doing the thing that they'd later go on to do in like this recent Ultimate Spider Man or Renew Your Vows, where Peter is portrayed as kind of this older, lovable aging dad. Back then, they were a young married couple who had relationship ups and downs and existed against the backdrop of an increasingly darker world. I'm not claiming this is my personal favorite era of Spider-Man comics, but it feels so unique from how the character is usually handled today. I know it may sound kind of like the setup for the Insomniac games, but stylistically it was much darker and Peter and MJ just had a completely different dynamic due to the fact that MJ was a completely different character. And it's an era of Spider-Man that the animated shows so far haven't really been able to go near. Now, of course, the 90s show had Venom and there was other storylines that were inspired by that time, but tonally, it was, unsurprisingly, a very kid-friendly show. That's not to take anything away from it, but they were doing a lot of things in the 80s and 90s that the show could touch on, but not with the same tone or visceral in-your-face edginess that was in vogue in comics at the time. Now, I know a lot of people tend to roll their eyes at that kind of thing these days, and I get it. That era of comics is a lot of things and consistently good is maybe not always one of them. But after a decade plus of the MCU style of storytelling and dialogue becoming so dominant with these characters, I think it can be a breath of fresh air when a comic book related show is clearly pulling from different influences. And one of the things I enjoy so much about Invincible is how it's able to take those kind of shocking scenes, often very violent or gross out moments that share a lot of the shock value that those 90s comics often went for, and deliver them with a added an emotional dimension, making them resonate beyond the initial shock in a way that that era of comics wasn't always able to pull off. And that's something I've never really seen in a Spider-Man cartoon. These days, Spider-Man animated series don't tend to let Peter age as much as he did in the 90s show, and the upcoming Spider-Man freshman year may turn out to be great, but it is yet another return of Peter to high school. That's perfectly fine, but I think you can see what I'm driving at here, that despite the amount of Spider-Man media existing on TV and film, an Agent Spider show that fuses the sensibilities of spectacular Spider-Man, 90s comics, and Invincible would genuinely feel different than any of the other Spidey stuff that's out there right now. And I understand that it couldn't actually be a Spider-Man show, though I suspect that the character's line about being familiar with other dimensions is supposed to help lead viewers to the conclusion that this is probably Peter Parker in one of his many other Spider-Verse incarnations. Obviously, they would not be able to do that in a full show. Agent Spider would have to have more of his own identity, even if he was still voiced by Josh Keaton. And I actually think this would provide them with tons of freedom and leeway, and I'd love to see what a reinvented Spider-Man freed from the constraints of being a Marvel product would look like. I understand on some level, this is all a bit goofy. There's no plans for this, and the chances that it actually happens are probably near zero. But once I started thinking about a Spider-Man show with the style of action set pieces and narrative ambition of Invincible, it was honestly just hard to get out of my head. The fact is, I've watched a lot of Spider-Man animated projects in my life, and I really love a few of them, but they're often content to repurpose the same classic stories over and over again with some influence from the last decade of comics or especially movies thrown in. That's all well and good, but seeing something like the Spectacular cast and some of that creative team reunited for a series that's a quasi-sequel to it but also allows them the freedom to truly do whatever they want, I really think that could be something special. And yes, right now Agent Spider is basically just Spider-Man with the serial numbers filed off, but I do think he could be a lot more than that. The showrunner of Spectacular Spider-Man, Greg Wiseman, actually has a Spider-Man comic out right now, Spectacular Spider-Man, a Miles and Peter team-up book. So if you liked the show, it's probably worth checking that out. Still, if Robert Kirkman and company reached out for more TV from him, I get that the odds are low, but 
and I would really love to see the result. Jetlag has been one of Nebula's biggest shows for a reason. If you like reality competition shows even a little bit, I think you owe it to yourself to check this one out. You can watch the current season and the entire back catalog on Nebula. And while you're there, you can catch up with great creators like Lindsay Ellis, who uploads exclusive videos along with Nano V Movies, Windover Productions, Patrick H. Willems, Be Kind Rewind, and so many more. I'm of course on there, and you can get all of my videos ad-free. Right now, you can get a lifetime subscription for only $300. There's no catch there, $300, and you'll just have Nebula for life. Of course, you can also get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan, basically just over $250 a month. Both are great options, so check out that link down in the description and start watching all my stuff ad-free on Nebula. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.